this thing. This thing right here. And I'm just learning about these. And I don't think enough of the van life, nomad, RV, travel community is talking about these. Like all the good videos I found on this were outside of this nomadic community. And I'm like, these are so useful. Why aren't more of our community talking about this? So this device is called a satellite messenger, and it sits somewhere between PLBs, which are personal locator beacons, and satellite phones. These are terms I just learned. And before I get more into them, thanks to this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an awesome learning community offering thousands of inspiring classes for creatives with classes on illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and much more. And the classes are not only precise and focused, they're broken into lessons that you can arrange into however many sessions work for you, whenever it works for you. I am still benefiting from the lesson I took in editing a how-to video I watched months ago. The tips are just worth going back to and reviewing again and again, even when I'm not doing how-to videos. It is especially helpful that they combine this video instruction with class projects. And the class project benefit extends beyond the instructor. You'll have access to a community of millions. One of the things I get asked about most on are tips on starting a YouTube channel. And honestly, Skillshare covers that far better than I could with a range of topics on shooting video and managing your own YouTube channel behind the scenes. If you're trying to get into YouTube or any social media really, you will find a great amount of benefit in Skillshare. Because it's curated specifically for learning, there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free one month trial of a premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So let's get back to the term PLB, which is a term I just learned, and it's called a personal locator beacon. And I think we have to talk about those because those kind of link into what satellite messengers are. And then above the PLB, way above it, is the satellite phone, which you may have heard of. And these satellite messengers, which are really, really cool, sit between PLBs personal lo locator beacons and satellite phones which are full-blown phones that use satellites instead of the traditional towers that your cell phone use. When I did a Google search for satellite phones just to kind of inform myself more about all of these devices and what was really good for me, satellite phones were really hard to find. Mostly because with the satellite messengers and the price point of entry for them and honestly the PLBs too for people who want to be really really simple Satellite phones are almost aren't necessary anymore. Now you might say, Dawn, my cell phone does tracking. Why would I need anything besides my phone? Here's the thing about cell phones. They depend on towers, which can fail and are very location based. The further you get away from civilization, the more complex reaching these towers becomes and the more likely you are to find yourself without coverage for your particular provider. A Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T person could all be standing side by side in the same spot. One of three of them could get signal, two or three of them could get signal, all three of them could be getting some different variation of signal, or none of them could be getting signal. And it all depends on what towers are nearby. Now if you're in major cities only, if you're in reasonably populated areas only, if you're never that far off grid, it may not make that big of a difference to you. But if you want to spend an extended amount of time away, and by an extended amount of time it could just be on an all day hike, these satellite messengers come in handy because they're more likely to work in these remote scenarios than your cell phone, which can easily lose contact with towers. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to 101 this and assume, like me, a lot of these terms are new to you. I mean, I heard of the spot device while watching another RVer's channel, but they didn't really go into it and I thought it was just some service you signed up for. I didn't realize it involved a device and picking a plan or that there were these other two things, namely the PLB and the satellite phone. Well, I knew about satellite phones, but I thought of them as something like 
you know, the FBI uses to make sure they can contact each other while, you know, off doing, like, you know, spy stuff or something. I don't know. I know it sounds silly. <laughs> um, but let's talk for a second about a PLB, a personal locator beacon. Now, where I found PLBs when I was doing my research online was a lot of marine stores. So people who go out on boats to go fishing, in that situation, because a lot of them are waterproof as well, you basically just have an SOS button. And that SOS button is going to contact the closest emergency services and bring them to your location. You can't check in with anybody. You can't send one-way messages to say, hey, I'm okay. You can't send any sort of tracking about your location normally. You can't do any two-way messaging where you send messages out and then you get messages back. PLBs are just for, I'm in trouble, come rescue me. Now the advantage to a PLB is if that's all you want, if you're like, I just go out on occasion and I'd like to know, you know, someone could come rescue me and this could be hunting, hiking, anything like that. If you could do anything that takes you out to remote areas, maybe just for day trips and maybe for long extended trips, I don't know. But if you're just like, I want emergency services to be able to find me, you might only need a PLB for something like that because it's basically a satellite connected 911 in your pocket and like I said you don't have to pay for additional services on that unlike the satellite phone and what I have which is one of many versions of a satellite messenger so what's the advantage of satellite phones and I'm gonna keep bringing those up because I think it's an interesting discussion and satellite messengers. Well the thing about satellite phones and satellite messengers is you can just let people know that you're okay or if you have a stranded non-emergency situation and you need to contact somebody you can also use messengers for that whereas with a PLB it's only 911 emergency situation that is all they're built for is like you know my boat is taking on water in the middle of the ocean um, I accidentally got shot or attacked while hunting I'm trying to think of the most extreme circumstances you know I fell off my motorcycle or my ATV or did something you know something happened out in the middle of nowhere and I need emergency services end of it but if you're just doing van life or like, I don't know, day camping or backpacking or something like that, and you just really need to contact someone you know to bring them to you to your location, well one, a sat phone or a satellite messenger might be able to provide that sort of thing where I don't need, you know, helicopters to come out and rescue me and pull me out of like a ditch. I just need to get a hold of somebody and I am out of cell service. Well, a satellite phone or a satellite messenger could actually provide that service to you. Maybe it's not that extreme. Maybe you have a mom, a dad, a spouse, um, kids, you know, because I know a lot of people who travel are older, like a, a lot of retirees travel, and they want to let their kids and grandkids and extended family know, hey, I'm out here, I'm okay, I'm living life, I can't contact you by cell phone, but guess what, I can sit, hit this button, and it just says, hey, I'm okay, and I am exactly here. So if an extended amount of time passes where they don't hear from you, they know where you were last. Um, same thing with parents. Uh, let's say your young son or daughter is like 18 years old, 20 years old, still kind of youngish. You still think of them as your, as your little baby, even though they're like, I'm grown, mama, daddy. Well, maybe you just want to be sure that they're okay. They have the ability to allow you to track their signal. And that's the only information you're getting. And even if they fall out of cell service, you have tracking about where they went. So they can be like GPS location, all right, GPS location, or if they're going on hikes or climbing mountains, even though, I don't know, grandma might be climbing mountains too, and you might want to let the grandkids know. But either way, you can send them these signals, you know, so that there's sort of a pattern of communication established that isn't interrupted by lack of cell phone coverage. And if something does happen where they don't hear from you, especially if you are a solo track, man woman whatever older younger whatever if you are a solo traveler at the end of the day you are solo one of my greatest fears is like me getting hurt and not only me getting rescued but like 
my animal being alone in the vehicle. If there is some tracking of this is where we were last and somebody is used to getting that communication and that communication stops, I mean, worse comes to worse. If the communication stops and they're used to getting communication from me but they've been sent my last location, they can at least come find me. Mickey will get rescued. I'll get rescued and we'll be okay. I know, I'm so concerned about my cat who abandoned me. He was back there at the beginning of the video. <laughs> but the thing about satellite phones is they've sort of fallen out of popularity. The only advantage of a satellite phone, and they are pricey. Now, mind you, PLBs are pricey as well. The ones I saw were like $300-ish, but you don't pay anything else after you buy the PLB. If you get a satellite messenger or a satellite phone, you have to pay for a plan, and it's because you have these messages. You're paying like the old days of cell phones for those messages to just go out to people that you know. People who are old enough before unlimited texting know that used to be fairly common that you had to pay per text. Um, a lot of these plans are like that. They have the lowest price packages will usually charge you per message. There are higher price packages that are unlimited, which might be good for people who are like, you know, camping together but might be separate at certain points or connecting or people who are traveling together and want to always be able to message each other those plans might appeal to them so that they can send each other GPS locations even when they're falling out of cell phone signal and that's where something like uh, the Zoleo which I'm going to talk about a little bit later when I get more into satellite messengers um, might find value in that phones, the only real advantage they have over messengers at this point is that they can make a phone call. Um, and a lot of us barely call in our regular lives, let alone if we are the type of people who enjoy being off-grid and separated and all that. So the ability to like grab on, get on a phone call and have extended conversations isn't really as necessary. And so the ability to have touch button access to emergency services is really the most important thing not being able to call people for casual conversation, which is why I think sort of the idea of the satellite phone is sort of dying out next to the satellite messenger. Now I have a really simple satellite messenger without a keyboard that does not Bluetooth connect to my phone. Both of those things do exist, and because those things exist, the people who want two-way communication would rather do it over text and sending GPS locations than having actual phone calls because it's mostly not necessary. You send a dot, say, we're going to meet here at this spot, or, you know, I found a nice camping spot, here's the GPS location, you know, here's my quick message to you. You don't really need a phone to do that. You'll talk when you get together. So... When I decided I was finally going to purchase a satellite messenger, there were basically three that rose to the top for me. The Garmin InReach, which does allow two-way messaging. It is the smallest tracking device offered by Garmin. I actually adore the Garmin devices. If I had the ability to buy some of the more expensive ones, I probably would. If I could afford the Garmin InReach, I probably would get that too. But I was specifically looking at the InReach Mini because it was the smallest thing offered by Garmin. The second option was the Spot Gen 4, which I ultimately bought. And the third option was this thing called the Zoleo, which is a relatively new entrance into this sort of market, but it seemed to have more attention online as far as reviews than anything else. There are some other smaller brands trying to do sort of the satellite messaging thing. The funny thing is, they're either using the same satellites as Garmin or the same satellites as Spot. And to me, their service plans are eh by comparison. And they just haven't been around as long. And most of the major competitors that I see people talk about is Garmin and Spot. So it was honestly price that brought me to the Spot specifically. Now, the Gen 4 Spot, which is ultimately what I got, as far as like buttons and function, in a lot of ways it's just like the Zoleo. And the Zolo Zoleo is a little more expensive and the Bluetooth connection to my phone was slightly appealing, but actually 
the Bluetooth connection to my phone actually kind of turned me off. The website gives a lot of lofty promises about the Bluetooth connection to your phone, but I kind of like the idea that everything about the Spot device is designed to work independent of my phone. And like I said, Zaleo's just kind of too new, and price point made me decide to skip the Garmin, which I actually think in a lot of ways is the better device. So let's talk specifically about this Spot device, which I've had sitting behind me for a little bit. So in the box, you get the Spot device, this lanyard strap, a micro USB transfer cable. By the way, the device is picky, so please do not lose the transfer cable that comes in the box. Um, four batteries. And that's it. I believe. For some reason they also sent me this extra power bank which is kind of odd because the spot does not use a power bank. It uses the four batteries that come in the package. The USB cable that comes with it is not for you to charge it. You can get rechargeable batteries but you would just be recharging those the way you would charge any rechargeable batteries in a separate little battery charger device. You can't charge batteries inside of that. When they're dead they are going to need to be replaced. Um, which is kind of weird for a device in, in 2021 uh, to not have the ability to recharge itself with an internal rechargeable battery, but it's supposed to last for a really, really long time on a set of batteries for its very, very simple functions. Now the device only has five buttons, three here and two underneath these little orange caps. The message button and the check-in button, which are your left and right buttons, kind of serve the exact same function. You basically, when you sign up for your account and you pick your plan, which you have to do just like purchasing a cell phone. You purchase the device, you go on the website, you purchase the plan. I mean, it's just like setting up a new cell phone account. And you will get the option of assigning messages to these buttons. Unlike some other devices like the Spot X or Garmin and Reach, there is no keyboard and because it can't connect to my cell phone, this is not something I can change on the fly. So while I'm in civilization, while I have an internet connection, this would be a good time to go onto the website, sign into my account, and preset whatever messages I want to set to check-in and message. Now you can treat these as two distinct kind of messages you're going to send to your message list, or you can have a different message list assigned to each button. It's basically special message number one and special message number two. And then when you hit the button, you have to hold the button down until you see the little green light come on. It'll start sending that message up to satellites. Now that message may not be instantaneous depending on how far you are off the grid, how long it takes for it to contact satellites, etc, etc, etc. But you can also have like messages that go specifically to your kids versus messages that go specifically to your friends list. You can have a message that's very special for your significant other, like good night sweetie, I'm safe, and then messages for your friends like hanging out here for the night, just sending the check-in. Like you can do kind of separate messages like that, but you only get two preset messages and you need to set them on a computer before you're out in the middle of nowhere and may or may not have signal. The middle button is basically a send my location button. So if you want to just drop dots about where you are, that's what this middle button is for. You can use this if you're going hiking, for example, and you just want to sort of leave breadcrumbs. You can also set up on the computer a sort of continuous me uh, tracking, like during an event. And then when you're at the end of that event, like a hike or something like that, get back online and turn it off. Or maybe you just want to leave it on for your whole trip so that you're leaving breadcrumbs. And you can set the interval at which these automatic tracking points will be sent out to your message list. So basically, you can either set up an automatic tracking feature or you can send out manual 
basically pins to your list so that they have just breadcrumbs of where you are. If you're just going to go park at a campsite and be there for a while, you may not need continuous tracking so much as like let me drop a pin of my gen general area, whereas if you're going to go on a hike or an ATV ride or a dirt bike ride or a motorcycle ride, you might want that actual trip tracked away from your campsite location so that there is a path of where you went and if you came back. Now, your two hidden buttons are the SOS button, which is hidden so you don't accidentally push it before you actually, actually want to. Um, the button works just like the other buttons, except this one, it isn't worried about sending messages to your friends list. It is going to send message to emergency services. This is for life and death emergencies. It's not for things like a flat tire or so, unless it's that's a life, life and death emergency and you're like starving in the middle of the woods but this is more like you know I fell down and twisted my ankle and I can't get back to where I need to get to or something like that this is absolute positive high emergency situation whereas this other side is the help button and the help button can have a couple of assignments depending on how you set up your account there are additional services that you can assign to this button that might be for non-emergency situations like a flat tire where you're unlikely to have somebody come along for help or just to send a message out to like your friends list list or a specific friend to say I need help but I don't need emergency services like I don't need an ambulance I don't need you know the the fire uh, uh, station I don't need the police I'm just I'm just stranded and I need my friend to come to this location and help me that's something that you can also use the help button for again because it's an emergency button it is covered up um, but as you see it's not red it's kind of black it's not as intense as the SOS button which is very specifically hidden so you don't just hit it now the cool thing is after you set this up you can do an SOS test because obviously you don't want to go randomly hitting this button and bring on SOS services but a lot of times you're going to want to test your device so you can set up a uh, test one line run the button as a test and then see you know how long it takes for you to receive a message that the SOS went through and because it's already set up as a test then you just have to remember to unclick that once you've confirmed that the signal is sending I do think one day I'd like to try one of the two-way devices such as the Garmin inReach or the Zaleo if not both of them and sort of compare it to my experience with the Gen 4 that being said, I'm very happy with my purchase. It doesn't have as many bells and whistles as the Garmin inReach, and it doesn't have the Bluetooth connection of the Zaleo, and unfortunately it uses regular batteries. Before the function that I wanted, which was to be able to let friends know my location in remote areas and be able to contact emergency services when I need to, the device is kind of filling that hole between where my cell phone can fail and being able to still explore those places I want to explore feeling secure. So I'm kind of really happy with my purchase, um, with the setup, even with the cost of the plan. Like, it's not super pricey when you think about what you get, even with some of the additional services that Spot offers. And that's another thing, Spot offers more additional tag-on services than the Zaleo. I'm not sure about the Garmin in InReach because I couldn't find any more information about it. Zaleo's strength in advertising seems to be about um, the Bluetooth connection to the phone, which in a way gives you a full keyboard messenger through its app through a Bluetooth connection, but there's just things that are, makes me feel really iffy about that. I like that my Spot device is completely independent of my phone, kind of doing its own thing with a very simple, simple purpose. But, I am a nerd, I do like playing with technology, so I would love to play with those other two devices um, at some point. But seeing as I just got through building out this box truck, 
and, and that was a real squeeze to my pocketbook. <laughs> I won't be trying them anytime in the near future. I hope this video has inspired some of you to uh, research more about satellite messengers. Um, see if they're for you. See if there's a device that can fill that gap for you. And maybe have it be a way to help you feel more safe out there on the road. I'll see you in the next video. So this was one of those videos where I really hoped I had made a video that a bunch of people get a bunch of information out of. I could have just said, I bought the spot, I'm gonna review the spot, but I thought it was way more important to talk about all the possible options out there. Cause for some people, they don't need a spot. They don't need a two-way messenger. They just want a PLB so that they could get rescued in an emergency. And some people are gonna really, really want that two-way communication and not wanna compromise on it. So I really wanted to make sure I talked about all the possible options in addition to the unit I got. I honestly haven't had it long enough to really like feel out my full feelings about it, but I'm excited to have it. It's another safety tool. And when you're out here on the road alone, the smartest thing you can do is have multiple safety tools. So as usual, it's time for YouTube business. So if you like this video, like it. If you wanna subscribe to the channel, subscribe. If you don't, it's totally cool. I totally understand different strokes for different folks. And I wanna send out special thanks to my supporters on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Bye-bye.